Hi, hello you guys and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be swatching, reviewing, and doing a full try on of the new Nightmare Before Christmas Melt Collection. Oh my goodness. You guys, if anybody is to collab with Nightmare Before Christmas again to make, create a makeup collection, Melt is the one. She is the girl. They are the moment. They are the ones who can pull off this Nightmare Before Christmas aesthetic, right? So we're going to be testing that. We're going to be trying out that because as far as packaging goes, I'm going to show you. They killed it. It is beautiful, but I want to see how everything actually wears. A little sneak peek, a little spoiler. I am wearing one of the lipsticks on my lips. And I also just did a live unboxing and live swatches of the palette of everything, of the whole collection. I unboxed it with you guys on a live, so I'll link that video down below in case you want to see that, because you can kind of see, like, I talk about my thoughts and why I purchased what I purchased, and you can see those swatches demonstrated, like, literally live. I actually have some stains down there from when I was doing it. So you can check that video out if you want. If you do want to check out the live, just know that you, if you're watching on our phone, make sure to put it in vertical mode, because YouTube is pushing that right now if we're filming lives on our phones it's really weird but there you go there's that but you can see everything up close better if you tap your screen in it it will make it big for you but anyways that's not what this video is this video is actually trying everything on and seeing how it actually performs and before we begin make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos from me like beauty content nail videos lifestyle book stuff all of those things that's what I do over here on my channel and if you want to get notified when I post those videos make sure your bell notification is tapped on and you can also follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Ashley Alex but enough of the formalities enough of the pre chit chat let's dive into it and let's go boo Boop. Let's talk details and specifications real quick. So right now you can purchase these products from Mel Cosmetics website as well as a couple pieces from the line at Sephora, but it does look like the digital dust highlighter has already sold out. Now I actually went ahead and bought the entire collection set just because it was a better value when I added everything up that I wanted. It was might as might as well just get the whole set and get everything. But it does look like the collection is sold out right now as a whole. So you'll have to get individual unless they restock, which I'm not sure if they will or not. The bag also sold out too. So I won't spend a lot of time on this, but this is what it looks like in case you were curious it actually is way better quality than I was expecting and it's very big so I'll be able to travel with this no problem I could fit the mirror in here some palettes everything came inside when you purchased it as a set too so that was kind of nice and look at the cute little medallion I love it every little detail so before we do the eyeshadow I'm gonna go ahead and throw on the lipsticks because sometimes that can be kind of distracting distracting especially because I'm having two different eyeshadow looks going on so let's start with pumpkin king since the lighter shade it's more orange in tone the packaging is so cute of of course and these are retailing for $24 each love this packaging <laughs> they always kill it they do and it actually feels like quality too better for $24 right let me first apply these just on my natural lips no liner or anything like that yeah matte 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 the matte melt formula is notoriously on the drier side this isn't as dry as some of the lipsticks that I've tried from them but it is it's got a little bit tuggy you know But dang, is it pigmented. Wow. Okay, that is a fast hack of a job, okay? But you can see the color, very pigmented. Feels actually nicer on the lips than I thought it would, so not as dry. And almost has a bit of a sheen to it, like a little bit of a satin. Looks what kind of like a satin matte, but if you blot it, I bet it mattes down a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So really, really pretty. Loving that with my hair. Ooh, very cute. But let's, I don't, I don't have a lip liner to match this. Sorry. So I'm going to go in with the next shade, which is Lock, Shock, and Barrel. Again, so cute. That's the theme of this. It's a cute, cute packaging. So adorable. Every little detail is thought out. And of course, retailing for $24 as well. Oh, this one, this one for some reason is way drier. Oh my God. Okay. It's, it's warming up now. Warming up. You just, you have to have a lip liner with these. These shades are so dark. And the point is nice, but that's gonna wear down. Oh, it's so dry. So much drier than Pumpkin King. Okay, another hack job on lipsticks. I just, I have to have a lip liner, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit rusty when it comes to applying regular lipstick and not liquid. It is so dry on the lips, so dry. And my lips are already notoriously dry. The color though, I'm loving this color. This is so pretty. So maybe with a lip liner, let me know what you think. Okay, let me throw in the lip liner, show you what that looks like. So much better with a lip liner. The lip liner I used was actually Melt 2. I got this in a mystery box. The Amore Collection Perfectionist Lip and Familia. It's like a perfect, perfect 
pairing. Like this is that in a lipstick form if you're interested in that. Just, it's really dry. You just have to know that going into it. Like I said, a lot of melt lipsticks are that way. The first one for some reason was a lot more smoother and almost had a sheen to it, but my lips, while they look so cool and I don't really have to worry about them budging, man, it is dry. And I am remembering a why I don't fuss with lipstick these days. It's just because it takes too much effort. However, I like this whole look. And it's perfect for spooky season. Hello. Loving that. Let me know what you think. Would you pick one of these? I'm glad that I swatched them. I'm glad that we did the lip test because in the product photos that I saw, I was thinking, oh, wow, those look like the same. <laughs> but they're definitely not. They're definitely different. I'm gonna throw some eyeliners on really quickly just so you can see that and then we'll also apply them when I do the shadows. But I just want you guys to see everything for what it is in case you're not planning on getting the entire collection. These are the two gel liners. You have Master of Fright, which is the Jack Skellington one. That one is your shimmery metallic. Metallic is the word I'm looking for. Metallic burnt brick shade. And then you have the Terrible Vision, which is the Sally one. That is your matte kind of more of a dark orange, like a burnt orange, a little bit closer in tone than I would expect. Like it's a shimmer version and a matte version basically, but different enough, I guess. Like you could definitely like just add a bit of a, a shimmer something on top of this to make it like this, you know, but I know not everybody likes to do that or knows how to do that or whatever. And that's more simplistic. So my point is, I don't think you need both, but you know, it's up to you but I don't need both. I just, I just went ahead and got it because it's a whole collection and I'll use them, I will. But you know, just throwing it out there. I'm surprised they didn't bring back that chartreuse one that they did for Beetlejuice or even not the purple because they've already done that so many times, but the, I love that one. I love it and it's very oogie boogie. You know, it's not Jack, but it's very oogie boogie. I love it. It's so good. So on this side, let me go ahead and pop in Master of Fright. On the live video, yeah, it seems like this one is way wetter than their usual formulas. Like I can, now that it's kind of sat around since I did my live now an hour ago, I am seeing actual liquid in the gel liner, which is weird for them. It just seems like this one, I wonder if I could get it on camera. It has, it has too much oil or liquid going on. So I'm not worried about this one drying. It's just kind of odd. And I was having a hard time picking it on my brush to do the swatch. So that was weird. And it's almost kind of pillowing. Like it's not wanting, it's pressing in, but it's not wanting to pick up. So let me kind of scrape it in. Oh, that's weird. I'm so nervous for that. And now I have like too much on the side of my brush kind of odd, kind of odd, but I did mention this was literally just delivered to me and it might have been just hot outside. So I don't know if that's the case. If you end up getting this or you did get it, let me know if yours is really liquidy, but this is so pretty. Okay, that is a thicker wing than I would normally do, but I just want you to be able to see it. Definitely shine comes across, not, not sheer. I've used ones that are a little bit more opaque. It's weird, it almost has like, just cause that oil, I almost needed to build it a little bit, kind of goes across like a medium sheerness, but that, maybe I just have a weird one. I don't know, I don't know what's going on with that one. But let me do the matte one on the other side. This one's not oily, but again, it's like very, it's way, way, it's like, I can't even believe it's keeping that shape. It's really liquidy, more so than any of the other ones that I've ever tried from them really bizarre. So let's see how this one applies. Okay, great. Smooth, creamy, really good. Oh yeah. Got a nice sharp line there. I love that. That is like one of my favorite shades in eyeliner ever. Actually, I have a Marc Jacobs one that is, it's discontinued. It's a dip liquid liner that I got on clearance and I love it. And this is that. So that's perfect. That's a nice little dupe there. And then this is exactly like Urban Decay Torch liner that I used to wear all the time, but in your gel formula. Love that, love it, love it. And it is drying down completely, completely matte. I just, I'm worried of how they're gonna hold up. But other than that, I like it. <laughs> And here is the shadow palette that is obviously themed after Mr. Oogie Boogie himself. It is retailing for $60. You'll see on the back lock, shock and barrel on the outer packaging. And the little shiftiness, that lithograph is so cool. I love when palettes do that. It's so much fun. And then you got the, even the back was really cool. I just thought that was like a nice little touch right there. And then you open it up to find 10 shadows in here, a mix of mattes and shimmers. Now the pans are scattered. I don't like that. It's not my cup of tea. It actually makes 
me cringe hard, but everybody has their own opinion on that. These swatches I just swatched are swatching weird. I don't know what's happening. Um, it's swatched fine in my live video, but we'll, we'll let's play around and let's see what, what's going to go on. Okay, so I just did my eye primer, ABH eye primer as per usual, and I'm going to dip in with my bugs. I'm going to be working on this side because I, I'm going to, I'm going to create a look circled around mausoleum. Actually, I think those might look really cool together but let's see if it works out in my vision. I'm gonna apply that onto the crease area. And the more I thought about these purples after swatching them on the live with you guys, I'm like, this looks like the Beetlejuice palette all over again. These purples are a little bit more varied, but very similar to what's in that. So if you're trying to decide, like if you have Beetlejuice already, you know, these are similar to that one. So you might be duping, you might be duping yourself a little bit. And then um, if you missed out on Beetlejuice, you know, and you're wanting those shades, and then there you go. And you also have the green one that is 100% a dupe for the lime green chartreuse shimmer shade in that palette. I was actually asked on my live to compare that to the Beetlejuice one. And we were like, oh, yep, it's, it's the same, it's the same. Really I have a hard time seeing any difference. The feel is a little bit different, but that's it. So very interesting. This is all really pigmented. So I'm applying it with this little denser, smaller kind of crease brush. And then I'm gonna go in with a fluffy brush. So just a standard little Sigma fluffy brush. Tap that out a lot. And then I'm just really gonna blend that. This is gonna be like the first time I've done a colorful look in forever. So let's see if I still remember how to do it. Okay, blending out nicely, just like I'd expect from Melt. Okay, where did I wanna go with this? I kind of just blanked. A little bit let me just let me just do this okay i'm just gonna take mausoleum on my finger ah oh, dang it it felt so good the first time i do it and it's already getting hard pan that's an issue i have issues with the melt metallics and shimmers and i'm not alone in it because i hear that complaint a lot they just don't want to do good they want to get hard pan and i'm just i'm i have to use my fingers for these like i this is just what i want to do i mean brushes don't work that great either but this right here, I'm building it up a little bit, but it really just wants to be a wash of color. But it's so pretty, like I want it to work, but I know that it's gonna get hard pan on me. It's already starting, just from doing swatches. It's so pretty though, dang it. Okay, so just kind of pressing that out. This is the kind of the looks that I've been doing a lot lately, just blown out in the front. I love that. What do I wanna do though on the corner? That's the question. Do I want to go purple? Do I want to go blue? You could go either way. Let's go, let's go shriek. Let's do it. I'm actually gonna take my Beetlejuice Melt packing brush. I love this packing brush, it is so good. Place it next to the lash line and just gently build it up from there. I'm just gonna kind of see how far I want it to go because I'm not quite sure. Really just playing, getting a feel for these. Kind of almost using it as a liner. Yeah, let's do that. Kind of wing it out almost a little bit. I'm not like rubbing too hard. I'm kind of gently placing it on because I don't want to muddy up between that blue and the purple. But I also wanted to see like, do these colors play well together? And they kind of do, I kind of like it. It's a soft, subtle, pretty quick look, but that's what I'm all about these days. So I'm not gonna come in here and do a cut crease, guys. Sorry, that's just not who I am anymore. That's pretty. See, the only thing I'm missing is like a light shimmer to tie it in. But if we really wanna get crazy, we can take Oogie Boogie. I'm gonna use that on my finger, my pinky. Oh, that's fun. Hope you guys can see that. And let me go in with a little bit more of the turquoise, see if I can build it up a little bit. They just don't have like enough binder in it or something to make it creamier you're just you're not getting that for was no smoke sessions palette how that one is that one is a unicorn of the brand <sighs> but this is a fun definitely like sally patchwork vibe kind of look different i know not everybody's gonna sport that but the colors did pretty well together i think once i put lashes and liner on it'll make a little bit more sense let's move on to the other side really quickly and play around just giving you the real T, the real 411. As somebody who is not wearing a ton of eyeshadow anymore, like just doing very simple, like shimmery looks and just neutral looks and things. First of all, I, obviously I have no business buying this, but I'm trying to like, you know, get back into the zone and add pops of colors and stuff. So just like getting back into that mindset. And I'm, I used to be a cut crease, full color type of gal, okay? But I'm sitting here like stumped 
Like I feel like every look I create is almost gonna be the same. So I'm really having to think outside of the box here. I'm gonna play with the teals because I know that's usually where they shine. But while I was doing that, I was actually doing my swatches for this video really quick. And I don't know what's happening with some of these mattes. These purple shadows, I'll show you on my camera up close so you can see, but they have, when I went to swatch it the first time with you guys live, I didn't have, I had no issue. Now I'm doing it a second time after using some of the shades on my eyes and it's scratchy. Like I, I felt it, I'm like, that's weird. And it swatched kind of different. And then I looked at the pan, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's like scratches in the pan. So that's weird. So I tried dusting it off and then that just made it like fling everywhere. But then I, and then I swatched it again and it still was happening. I not noticing it with the teal or the blue shade. It's just those three purple shades. Never experienced that with melt before. I have experienced it with one other palette before and it was a palette that gave me a ton of trouble. It was back in the day. I don't use his products anymore, but it was Jeffree Star's cremated palette. That was the last one I ever bought. That one was a hot, hot mess and it was doing those kind of things. So I don't know what's going on. I'm not used to it with, I'm not used to that with melt matte formulas. I'm completely shocked, but I want to give you that information because you're here to watch my thoughts and opinions on it. And my thought is that what the heck, what the heck, but let's use, oh, I want to use those shades. I don't want to do a purple look cause I was already doing that on the other side. I want to do a turquoise look, but I kind of think I need to do the purple now, right? Right? So let's do that. Let's do that. Ah, oh, maybe it'll work out as long as it, cause like swatches, whatever. I mean, whatever. But as long as it works on the eyes, okay. I'm gonna grab my packing brush again and I'm gonna go right in with Bone Daddy then. Cause that's the one that is like the biggest culprit. That is so bizarre. And it's like really picking up the product. It's almost kind of loose. I don't know what's causing those scratches other than maybe the pigments are rolling around almost like beads. Yeah, this is what I was afraid of. Coming across a little bit patchy and not quite thicking like I would want it to on the lid. That's so weird. Do you guys see this? Situate, ooh, that's not my lighting right now. That's like patchy. Oh no, okay, okay. Okay, Mayday, avert. Never, like I don't expect these days for eyeshadows to not perform for me. I'm gonna go in with the lighter shade to just gently buff that out a little bit. It's not wanting to, to blend together well. Oh no, the more I add, the worse it gets. And <laughs> I don't know why that's happening. Whatever, we're just, we're just playing now. This is not a tutorial, okay? <laughs> Let's, I wanna see what happens when I use the turquoise shade. So let me clean off this brush. Let's go in with ooze and do the same thing, but on the inner corner. Okay, that one's doing fine, but it's, again, it's not scratchy. Something's happening with those purple pans. And I swatched them the same. Like, so if you, if you say like, oh, it's the oils in your fingers. Well, it's not doing it on the other ones. It's not, it's just that purple. Patchiness, same brush, same brush. Okay, well, let's do something with this look. Let's take Oogie Boogie and pop it into the center. I might have to call this a day. Well, that's fun though. Look at that. I actually kind of like those two looks together if that was, if that was uh, working. That green is so pretty, so fun. Hmm, you just have to like cover that up then. Let's do that. Let's cover up that purple with worm's wart. Oh, that looks crazy now. <laughs> I mean, this just looks like a uh, Beetlejuice look that I've done before. Oh my goodness. Okay, things are stopped. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I messed that up. Those are fine. It's just the purples. It's just the purple. So I'm gonna take this off. Um, I feel like you guys deserve to see what this looks like with mascara and liner though. So let me just wasn't expecting this to happen. <laughs> Let me just do that. Let me just do that. Okay, here is the eye look with lashes and liner. Lashes as in just mascara, not full flow lashes. Definitely very Sally patchwork vibes. I'm doing that because, oh, pff, whoops. I went ahead and did, I did this like turquoisey blue eye look with the Oogie Boogie green shade and it went fine. You know, I used that deep turquoise shade. Didn't do like a step-by-step -step with you because I was just so frustrated. I didn't want to talk. I just wanted to do an eye look and 
watch it as it goes. It came out fine. I used that dark teal shade ooze and then like I said, oogie boogie green and a little bit of mausoleum, that teal shade that I love. I, that's the standout shade other than kind of. It's almost a standout shade. It's just, I don't like the texture of it. It's coming across too sheer and it's pressing and it's hard pan. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm having a lot of thoughts. I'm having a lot of emotions. I'm having a lot of feelings. I'm just jarred. I'm shaken. I'm shooketh in, in, an, in a negative way. And I wasn't expecting that. I have loved Melt Matte's formulas for so long that that's really throwing me off. But let's pull that out. I don't know why those three purple matte shades are performing that way for me. I don't know if that's an anomaly. It's just something that you need to know. Uh, but other than that, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about the entire color story, okay? To me, it feels like a palette that's gonna need another palette with it. So that's that's the eyeshadow palette. And while I'm sitting here thinking about it, I was thinking about just the overall color story. If you take away the packaging, packaging is a 10 out of 10, I'm obsessed. But if you just look at the shades of both the eyeshadow palette and the liners and the lipsticks, the best word that can come to mind for me is disjointed. Like I don't honestly feel like everything's very cohesive except for the liners and lipsticks which are basically the same thing like those complement each other but as I was like really wanting to do the gel liners with these looks and like what is gonna the blue might look cool with the orange kind of but they're just not quite right obviously the orange shade but you're gonna need to use something else other than the shimmer orangey shade so it's very much the palette is very much a palette that needs to be paired with something else which I don't usually love that for a 60 something dollar palette and then the liners like it's it's just an interesting choice you know they wanted to do that pumpkin vibe which is cute but I guess I just need to think out of the box here. Is this just me? Like, let me know. What are your thoughts? Do you feel like when you look at all of the colors that they picked, isn't it kind of weird a little bit? They could have probably just put a white and a black in here to really just help it with blending and with cohesiveness. Or maybe not. I don't, I, this is, this is hard, you guys. It's just something I want you to think about. I need to throw on the highlighter really quickly. It is a gorgeous highlighter. I applied it on my live and it is really pretty. I'm gonna show you how I make it work for me. I say that because it's a little bit darker in tone. It is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. But let me take this really quickly. And bonus, like if you go to swatch a heavy hand, you can still see the imprint. It's not just like lightly pressed in. It seems pretty hardly packed in, hard press. So I was putting it on and you can kind of see the strip a little bit and I have light to medium neutral skin tone if that helps. So what you can do, cause I see a, like a strip of yellow is you can take like a powder puff or something and just press it out. Cause it is really pretty. It has a beautiful pink and gold shift to it. But if you do too heavy handed and you have either my skin tone or lighter, you're gonna be able to see a strip. So deeper skin tone shouldn't have that issue. You should be able to just go ham and have some fun with it. But if you're lighter like me, you may need to make it work for you a little bit. Okay, I just stepped off for a second. I was kind of like packing everything up and I was trying to collect my thoughts on this since I'm so like caught off guard. And I thought this is the best way to put it. If you removed all the packaging, okay, because we know the packaging is a 10 out of 10. If you're a collector like me, gorgeous. They did a great job on the packaging. And I can see where they're trying to go with the color story, right? It just, even though it's disjointed, I get where the inspiration is. But are there any pieces that if I just put it in blank packaging, would I wanna buy it? Number one, regardless of price point, would I want it? And would I use it in my everyday or at all? Like what? The eyeshadow palette is a no. I won it. <laughs> this was purely because Nightmare Before Christmas, 100%. Actually, the only piece that I can really say I would for sure get regardless of packaging would be Terrible Vision, the gel matte liner, because I just love that shade and I know their formula. I usually love it. Everything's good. I would almost say Master of Fright, except that one, it's, it's frightening me. I don't know what's going on with that oil. It seems a little, I don't know. Highlighter, I can't say that. I'll use it on my everyday just because I have to make it work for my skin tone. So it's gorgeous, but for me, no. I, the lipsticks are no, so that's kind of crazy when I think about it for me. Like I definitely bought this as a collector's and I just know Melt's formula usually and I know what to expect and I'm just thrown a little bit off guard. The mirror, it's so cute, but I did not intend to buy it. I wasn't even gonna get the entire collection until I saw that it just made more sense price point wise. The bag is honestly the thing that surprised me the most because it's just such good quality and it's so fun and like I wouldn't think to buy it, but it, again, it just made sense to buy it that way and uh, 
think that that is good. So for what I've experienced today, based off of first impressions and trying it in all different types of ways, do with that information what you will. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts and opinions too down in the comments. How, do you have this collection? Am I alone in these experiences? Do you feel the same way? Did you not get the collection because you had these thoughts? Also share this video with anybody that you know is on the fence of whether they wanna get any of these pieces or not, because maybe that will help them in their decision-making. And subscribe if you wanna see more beautiful beauty videos for me, lifestyle, book content, all those things. And thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my thoughts and opinions on this collection, how everything worked for me. And I hope you all have a beautiful, wonderful, super awesome day. Bye.